I love this city. Which part? The corruption? The crime? Or the undead? The sunsets, the gardens, the markets, the neighbors saying hi. Are we living in the same city? Yes, we are. And I love this city. Alright, hello everybody, welcome back. We are here, uh, ready to continue our adventures on Bract. It's just before sunset here, um, you can't quite tell it yet. Which is kind of perfect actually because we're about to go meet with a bunch of pirates and uh, as a member of the Order of Whispers and I like the idea of doing that right at sundown. Uh, so yeah, welcome back. I, I like the way we look at the moment, I just sort of feel like it would be nice to get more going on with our outfit, I'm not sure. Uh, so today we are on a bit of an adventure deep into Gendaran Fields. Areas of Gendaran Fields we haven't seen before and I kind of wanted to show you guys a couple of new features and things as well while we're at it. Number one being something we can do with a camera that I haven't done yet on this series. Uh, I was actually playing with this for a long time because I wanted to know how soon I could introduce this to you all. Um, and the earlier the episode, the better. I'm sure if this appeared in like episode one or episode two, a ton of you guys would have seen it and been like, wow, I didn't realize Guild Wars has this. And maybe it would have convinced some of you to pick the game up. But I'm leaving it later here because frankly, it's, uh, it's not the best way to play the game. But it is a feature that was added after release. And it's particularly fun on Asura. It's a checkbox in the general options that allows you to now, and this was not available for years, go, oh my god, she looks terrifying, go first person. So we can actually play first person, and you do get a totally different, and I, I love first person experiences. If you actually watched my original series um, of Guild Wars 1, I used first person all the time. Uh, and so it's fairly fantastic. There's another option that allows your camera to be at the height of your character So using these two together we can be a little Asura explore. There you go. There we've got this the uh, the Sun going down now We can be a little Asura exploring the world in sort of like a true one-for-one -one scale And of course here you might even want to up the FOV none of these were options available to the player base way back then So you don't find any pl uh, gameplay really using it much um, that's not to say that this entire episode is going to be in first person. I think that would be really difficult. It's going to be kind of scary jumping off this cliff in first person. We don't want to hit any rocks. Let's go into the water over there and we'll fall underwater. But first person is absolutely a thing. And even saw for a second there as well. There's actually a way to bug the game too. So you even get your weapons in first person. Maybe I'll show you that on a, on a later episode at some point. Uh, but for now, we're just going to swim along. I really don't want to get caught too much underwater here. Uh, you'll notice that none of our skills have been selected on the right-hand side. That's because we haven't been underwater since getting utility skills. So uh, less of our things are available. Like the flamethrower, that's not available underwater. It wouldn't make sense to have a flamethrower underwater, right? So we don't get that. But we can get our elixirs. We can get turrets. So the devs, people bag on the underwater sides of Guild Wars 2 quite often. What the hell shot us? I think a cannon shot us. Yeah, from the pirates. We're in pirate territory, guys, so it's kind of dangerous. But uh, in some places, they actually put a lot of effort into underwater. So I will show you here, for example, a turret. We know what they look like on the surface. We've seen them loads. But if I drop my rifle turret down here, you'll actually see, and now it's shooting this barracuda, it's a completely different design. So it's, you know, it, it's floating here and it's held in place. It looks totally different. And all the turrets of all the varieties, this is the only turret that we've actually been using so far in the series. Later we'll get the rocket turret and stuff, don't you guys worry. Uh, they all have different appearances underwater. So, and one of the elites as well. There's an elite version of the turrets, which is super cool. Um, so, you know, in some places they have put their effort. Uh, for now, we're limited on what we can do though. So let's just put elixirs. And there's not a single elite skill we've got available underwater just yet. So yeah, I'll pick the turret up and we'll keep on moving. Let's try and get out of underwater. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of underwater as we move to the pirates here. But yeah, we don't want to spend too too long with it. There's some other stuff I want to show as well just before we get into do with first person. When we get back out, I will happily do that. Get onto the beach here. Oh, my goodness. I love the color here. It looks so nice here right now. Uh, the sun proper went down as we were underwater there. So another thing, by the way, about first person yes. is when the first expansion came out. Oh, look, we leveled up. That's cool. When the first expansion came out... Uh, they added combat mode, which I've been using a lot, right? So we have a crosshair in the middle of our screen when we look at the rabbit. We are aiming at the rabbit, and now when I click, I shoot him by clicking. And the same as if I look over at the mower, we get, like, different crosshairs telling us when we're in range. And we can actually shoot, right? And so this is a little bit more fun when we are in first person, right? Um, not very practical for any kind of major fight. Like, already this feels pretty crazy, and we're just fighting a mower here with our rifle. But you can do it, and, uh, you know, you can shoot anywhere you're looking. So one thing that's particularly fun is using the flamethrower, which we of course caught last episode. And where we look, it does actually send the flames. So we can go charging around 
uh, burning things as we see fit. And because this is kind of a simple play style as well, you just kind of hold the main button down. Look, we can knock him away. Uh, it's it's kind of, you know, a fun little play style. So something to consider, maybe. Uh, just some stuff you can sort of mess with. Uh, we probably won't be using too much flamethrower uh, in this uh, episode, though. We did just level up. Let's see what we unlock by leveling. This is the highest level we've seen so far. Ooh! Oh, there's so much going on, guys. I'll, I'll look at that later. Um, we're gonna not use flamethrower here. Because we just leveled up, we got some hero points. And I do kind of want to get a new kit. So check it out, we're here on the beach, we're away from those pirates that are shooting us a second ago and we've got a sweet ass new outfit on, the pirate outfit, this is pretty cool. Tibbalt's over there just before we start off, so if we go training, um, early you saw me get a kit, the med kit, you saw the flamethrower kit, let's get the next one, that's the grenade kit. So uh, yeah, we're not going to use flamethrower, we'll use this instead, let's equip it. Um, so it's here, we can click it to equip and you can see we get this bandolier of grenades down here in one of our hands. Uh, so the tool belt is grenade barrage Throw like a billion grenades out that blows up in an area. There is the chill grenades Chills people there are poison grenades poison people there are shrapnel grenades bleeds people and there are blind grenades blinds people and then there's just regular grenades which we throw around so tons of grenades and uh, yeah, you just get to spam nades from a good range. It's a bit like the rifle has longer range and is more single target. The grenades are more AOE, condition oriented, and even have a lot of power on them too. So there you go. All right, Tibble, what's going on, man? We got our grenades. We're ready. Let's, let's tuck in. Come on, a bit of an adventure to go over to this island. She says, a vast. That pirate outfit is excellent. Want me to go over the plan again? You're going to love this. Or kill Hormy. Possibly both. Oh, God. Don't forget guys from the previous video. We may be going rogue here. Um, yeah, go over the plan. I want to make sure I understand it He says pirates are vicious, but not so smart while you distract them I'll search the camp for any sign of the minister's daughter Hang on. Well, I'm the distraction. Why not you? He says this one's all you friend. Don't worry You'll be great. Just trust me and play along. Oh, you worry me Tibble. He does. He worries me certainly Let's move the minimap down he says, ready you wait, wait when you are. Woohoo! I mean, yar. <laughs> Alright, here we go, I guess. Keep the Jackdaw Pirates occupied so Tybalt can search for Demi. And again, he just compliments us on our thing and it's it's the same dialogue. Alright, fine. So let's let's just fight these crabs on our way in. And uh, we'll see how this feels. So there you go. We just an immediately blow that crab up. I think he was a weak crab. So maybe uh, maybe we don't have to look at that too much. We look good as a pirate, don't we? I mean, I like our Ratasume outfit. But we look pretty good as a pirate. Hello, Jackdaws. Hello. So there's a sapper here. There's an a sniper here. We won't draw too much attention to ourselves. They have a chicken. Okay. What else have they got? They've got a nice little house here with a fireplace. I guess I should put the grenades away, right? And the rifle. We'll just be nice. Hello. You made a mistake, Todd. Oh, God. Did I? Are you going to attack me? <laughs> she looks drunk. I wouldn't be surprised if she is drunk this time of day. Uh, hello, Jackdaw Sniper up there as well. Let's just go onto the boat. Let's be very cautious. Hello, guys. How's it going? I'm the dist- I mean, friend of yours. Not distraction. Yar, me hearty. I'll wager my buddy here can drink you foul-smelling lot out of the table. Now... Who's got the guts to challenge us? A drinking competition? What are you doing? Shh, just go with it. Trust me. <laughs> Who are you scoundrels? And what's your wager? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm two tibs of whisker, and this is, uh, blood-covered backstabbing blackjack the blade. Yeah. <laughs> and our wager is two fistfuls of gold. Are you in? Hi, I'm in. Jack Dawes, belly up to the bar. Fill your mugs and lay your money down. Blackstab, blood-covered, backstabbing Blackjack the Blade? What on earth? I need to actually get that character name on my account. That would be brilliant. All right, hello. So we're going to play a drinking game as a distraction? Tibble. Uh, he still doesn't say anything different. I'm in over my head here. I'm a little bit concerned. These pirates do not mess around, by the way. They really don't. This is actually a dangerous island to come to in the game. It's quite easy to get killed here early if you come here slightly out underleveled. Um, which makes it unique as far as a lot of Corteria locations go. So, one drink Drake here. He says, Blackjack, eh? I like it. Let's test your skills, shall we? Uh, are the rules the same in these waters? <laughs> he says, the rules are you drink. Then your opponent drinks. Water will even you kill. But if you drink any, your opponent gets some too. 
Okay, so any house rules for you jackdaws? Well, cheating's allowed, so long as you're not caught. The crowd will murder you. Remember, Belchin's your best weapon against a tough foe. All right, I'm ready. Let's get this party started. Listen up, you sea dogs. Come witness about to be remembered. The bold newcomer versus your favorite cheap date, one drink Drake. I hate you guys. A titanic match of fortitude and resilience. Let the drinking begin. <laughs> okay. I'll drink you under the table, lover. All okay, right, so he's one drink Drake, right? So we're going to play a drinking game. Now, you'll notice our skills have changed completely. We're actually holding a mug. Uh, well, we've got it We've got it around our waist right now. So uh, this is a drinking game where we get to choose very carefully what we do, all right? We can act... Okay, they're cheering for us. We can actually take a swig of ale. We can fake out our opponent so that when we drink, it looks yeah. like we're drinking ale, but we're actually hiding it. Or we could drink some water to restore our health. But if we drink water, he's allowed it too. Okay. So basically, by drinking, I'll, sh I'll show you how this looks. And then we'll do the boast afterwards. So we'll just drink. Okay, ready? Here we go again. <laughs> One more for oh, one. There. Brilliant. So by drinking, we lost a bit of health. So you can, you can imagine our health is like a drunkenness meter right now. If we run out of health, then it means we're drunk and we, we, we lose, right? So we can take some more, yeah. more alcohol here. So every time I drink, he drinks. And you'll notice he's losing a lot more health than we are. So even though we're a small little Asura, i got to be honest with you guys, one of the reasons I really wanted to play this arc with Bract is so that we could be a little Asura in this drinking game here and drink this human, this petty human under the table. Yeah. All right, okay, so we'll take another swig. No fair. I can't drink two drinks. I only have four hands. <laughs> okay, I'm sure. And one more. We'll just play this one legit. Room spinning. And down he goes. Yeah, suck it. No, don't get your rifle out, Bract. So they splash water bucket on him to get him up, and he moves over. <laughs> yeah. Hey, one drink Drake has lived up to his name. No surprise there. Our second contender, small but fierce. Watch out for Kipler the Tippler. Prepare to be inebriated into a inebrilivian, stranger. Round two, go. Brains, brawn, and brigandry. Now, drink until you're pretty. Yeah. Well. Oh, what? How dare you insult the beautiful Bract? Just let me turn this amazing headpiece off. Oh, we actually can't because we're in the outfit right now. How dare you insult us? I will stand on the table and drink you under. I love the idea of an Asuran pirate, right? Such an interesting idea. And uh, yeah, he's small too, so I'm sure we can get him. We might have to be a little bit more careful this time. So here we go. We'll drink. And so will he. Okay, so if you look at the, the, the bars, I don't know whether we can just straight up out drink this guy. Um, so let's do a fake out. We're going to pretend to drink even though we're not. Did we get caught? Ooh, I don't know. I don't think we got caught. Maybe he maybe he, he hit as well. Let's do another regular drink now. Oh, no, that was the fake out right there. That was the decision to fake out. Okay, now we'll drink another regular one. Slow down, slow down. This is a competition. Hell yes, I do. Hell yes, I think it's a competition. What was this? We just unlocked a skill five while he was speaking. Could we interrupt him, I wonder? So the skill four here is we can boast yeah. of our drinking prowess to rally the crowd. And it's only effective as a display of showmanship. Yeah. Hell yeah. Look, they're all loving it. Okay, so that's cool. We get the crowd on our side a little bit more. All right, we're going to fake out again here. We're going to do this quite a lot. Because I think we're going to have to uh, continue cheating to get his health a little bit lower. So we'll fake out again Stop. here. Oh! Oh, okay. So he caught us. He caught on to the fact that we were cheating. And he burped yeah. in our face, maybe? So uh, it poisoned us. Now, poison means that if we, if we try and drink water while we're poisoned, the water won't heal us very much. So, ideally, what we can actually do is poison him and then drink the water, forcing him to drink in the poison, because his AI is worse than ours, right? So that makes sense, guys? Okay, so uh, let's have another regular drink. Let's keep this going. Oh, we're going to be here all day. So here, we'll belch. Yeah. Yeah. And now we'll drink water. And while he's poisoned, he will drink water too, but he doesn't get much benefit from the heal. So now he's at half health, and I've just healed up massively here. So now we can just drink him on the table for a while. We can just roll through with this. Come on, drink lots of them. Here you go. I guess we can belch again in a second here. 
All right, let's do the belch water combo. Most for forty forty fluidus. For fortuitous. <laughs> that. Woo. Uh, he's great. I love it. Drunk Asura. We don't get to see enough Drunk Asura interior. I reckon I can just drink him well under the table now. And then we can go the whole way, guys. We're going the distance. Here we go. <laughs> One more. We really pace this out. Nice, slow, sturdy game. Head goes down. Ears go up. That floor looks mighty soft. Boom. I'm actually drinking while recording it, funnily enough. I'm, I'm drinking Orchid Pig Reveler. Oh, the Tippler has toppled. Yeah. Our contest isn't over. Welcome that hollow leg hellion, Rana <laughs> Guzzleman. No time for talking. Let's drink. This is uh. for the win. No excuses and no prisoners. Drink up till you're falling down. Keep your eyes on the booze and your head in the game, fool. All right, I'm actually getting on the table now so we can look her in the eye as we do this. Uh, the funny thing is these guys don't know what they're up against. We're, we're an alchemist, right? We've been chugging potions hardcore. All right, so anyway, heavy drinker she is. She's a champion, apparently, a champion pirate. So let's see what we got. The combo should seek to be fine for us. So we're going to rally the crowd a bit because yeah. if we have to cheat later, they might not, you know, we we gotta we got to have them on our side if we're going to be cheating. And, uh, yeah, let's just start spamming this drink here. Here we go. So we'll spam this down. We won't drink too quick. We'll wait for her to drink between goes. Okay, let's burp at her. And then drink some water. There you go. Good. See, if the AI was just a bit smart, you'll notice here that this is, like, trying to be turn-based a little bit. The funny thing is, after release, in sometime around 2014, I think, they added another thing to the game called Belcher's Bluff, which is kind of another version of this, but you can play between players. <laughs> I'm in it for the long haul, though. Hell yeah, I can keep up. Uh, and when you play it between players, the rule set is different, and it properly forces it to be turn-based. It's really good. It would be nice if the devs went back to these kind of um, missions and updated them, but they haven't so far. All right, anyway, so let's keep drinking. We don't want to go too crazy here, because we're actually drinking so fast that our little combo... Look at how tanky she is as a child. This is insane. All right, let's burp at her. Drink some water. So this is actually really good. This is one of the few places I think that the core game is extremely powerful at teaching us about game mechanics. So what this really does here is it teaches us about the effects of poison. So poison does damage over time, but it also reduces incoming healing. So we'll burp at her again, and we'll do yeah. it again. Um, which is why we're able to do this. Yeah. You'll notice, by the way, as well, that the lower our health is when we belch, the more powerful it is. There's a few things like that. We had regeneration on us a second ago. I think when you drink water, maybe. Uh, but whatever. Oh, did we get the regeneration from a trait, maybe? I don't know. Traits yeah. should be disabled. There are ways to cheat this as well, just to be perfectly clear. There's ways to cheat it where basically... Um... Yeah. What kind of filthy shenanigan liver do you have? <laughs> uh, where you can, like, pop boosters. Remember this booster we got here? It, some characters, some storylines give you a re regeneration booster at this point, and if you use a regen booster, you're just permanently gaining health through this, and you can cheat. Um, she just mentioned the Titans, guys! Fans of the original series will know about those. The Titans were the char gods that helped them beat uh, the humans in Ascalon, and, um, and then eventually sort of ended up, through one way or another, betraying the char and not being what they claimed to be originally. So I loved hearing the child talk about the Titans. This is one of the only places in the game where they do. Or it seems anyway. Go on, drink up, Grana. You must be there, Spicy. Yeah. Oh, wise one. Teach me. <laughs> Boom. Unbelievable. The newcomer Blackjack is the last drinker standing. We got ourselves a new potentate of potables. Surprise, surprise, eh, Gabriel? I mean, yar. Flotsam and Jetsam. Now, how about that wager? Fine, fine. I'll go fetch your gold, you thieving sea whisker. Okay, listen up. While you were guzzling away, I found to me. She's under heavy guard on the other side of the water. So there was a plan after all. Beyond getting me sloshed, I mean. Of course <laughs> there was. What did I tell you? You just have to trust me. 
<laughs> Another difficult thing to decide with being an Asura or not was all the different characters and race and gender combos have different good dialogue there. Some of them sound amazing drunk. Uh, just for what it's worth, if you guys are playing along, maybe you want to see this mission storm, eh? with a variety of different stuff. So there you go, boom. Any port in a storm? Did he really just say that? Wow. I'm sure that's not referring to what I think that's referring to. And look, they're all taken out. It's funny, by the way, because I seem to remember we had to fight a Norn here. Did they patch that out? The Norn was like the final boss. Maybe they figured the instance was too long, though. Hey, second might make Kedril. He's going for our stuff, right. Okay, so Tibble, what have you found out while we were getting sloshed, buddy? Let's go. We can run back the way we came and hopefully not draw too much attention to ourselves. We got the snipers. I really like this outfit. Should we be a pirate from here on out? Here's the funny thing. Oh, Tibble, sorry. I ran on ahead of you. I'm over here, dude. When you're ready. The other, um, it, there's another thing I really want, though, because in our inventory, you'll notice, actually, when we joined the Order of Whispers, we got an Order of Whispers weapon container as a reward. You might have noticed this previous episode. And this gives us Order of Whispers weapons, which are all really good weapons, right? So here, I'll actually take, uh, I guess I'll take the rifle. And the Order of Whispers have their own set of skins, right? So look at this rifle. Look at this elegant, like, rifle here. Um, and would they get armor and stuff as well? So we could make ourselves look like the Order of Whispers. Well, oh, there's uh, there's so much opportunity. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna give Tibbalt some swiftness here so that he moves quicker by shattering the elixir B on him. And now he's running fast. Oh god, we gotta swim, do we? I'm gonna try and stay at the water surface. Oh god, I dodged backwards. Damn it! I didn't want to go underwater. I wanted to swim casually and cleanly across the surface. Damn it, Tibbalt. I blame you for this. We'll wait for him to get out. No, you still stuck out in the water, buddy. Go on. Off you go. There you go. Lovely. Let's give him another elixir B. So what? You came all the way out here onto the other side. To this wreck. Okay. Still seems like pretty much pirate territory, if you ask me. Moving up past the nets. I'm scared to go too far ahead of him because he might he might not his AI might not realize we're here. I'm ready with my grenades. Let's do it. Whatever trouble we make out. Here we go. We got a jackdaw jailer. This is a jail? Yar and rar and fly me, matey. How's about you let us fellow pirates through? The best and boatswain, the prow cap sailor. Who did you say you were again, fella? Hi, <laughs> Jim's a whisker. This is blood covered backstab and blackjack delay. Yar. Raised the crow's foot and broke down the Jim Jabber Jabber thing. <laughs> He's brilliant. You're kidding. Mates, we got trespassers. Shank them. Come on, no one would be that stupid. We're not trespassers. Fine. You ask for the grenades, you're going to get the grenades. So, yeah, we can use our tool belt here to do a lot of damage and then the other grenades too. Sorry, dude. Down you go. What can I say? Oh, and there's more coming in, but luckily they're balled up. So we can just sort of stay back here. Chug some elixirs as we go. Throw away. I know some of you guys are going to be curious about what first person grenade chucking looks like. And so here you go. We basically just see grenades coming out. But you see the screen shake is like crazy in first person. <laughs> Down he goes. Tibble. You're going to get that door open. Oh, he did. Very quickly as well. I thought there'd be more waves. Oh, pretty simple. Aren't you a little sober to be a pirate? Look. We're with the Order of Whispers. We've been sent to get you out of here. We're here to abscond with you, and with the beard. The beard's already vanished into thin air, so now it's your turn. Thank the goddess, Lissa. I was starting to think the Order had forgotten me. Do you have a plan to get out of this place alive? Sort of. The idea starts with run for it, and generally goes downhill from there. Come on! <laughs> this is great. All right. We're going to flee. <laughs> Defeat the last of the pirates so that Demi and Tibble... Ow! We got proper hurt there. They're manning a cannon. What is this? We'll have to throw some grenades over there at that. We can't be dealing with this. Ow! It actually really hurts. That cannon seriously hurts. Brack, be careful, man. We're going to need some more defense here. So we'll uh, eat some med pack goodness. We'll throw an elixir B back again. And let's keep... See, I'm hoping if I move left and right, I can bait the cannon fire. Dodge it. Dodge it. Oh, we might have managed to dodge it. I don't know. 100% there. How low is it? It's it's 30%, 31. Oh, there it is. Oh my god, it, sh it fires so fast, it's almost impossible to dodge. It's okay though, because it's going to break before the next before they can reload. Boom! Oh, I love it when things get destroyed in this game. It's so good. All right, Tibble. Yeah, yeah, we got it, man. It's all right. Let's go. Oh, wait. Do you have any dialogue for me? Uh, no, it's the same as before. Okay, fine. Wait, wait, no. That's not the same as before, is it? 
How exactly did you manage to get these pirate get-ups? The Order of Whispers is ready to handle anything, even pirates. Anyhow, onto our task, he says. They seem so mysterious and strange right now, but I'm almost doubting they exist. It may just be this guy. Though, I suppose if you remember, we did meet that mysterious lady named Real, who did verify this was legit. We didn't just get thrown out with a complete random. Um, but it certainly does feel that way, doesn't it? Let's knock this guy away. And then shoot him from back there. That's brilliant. I'll escort to me to the Lion's Arch safe house. Meet us there. You have a safe house in Lion's Arch? Okay. Another time, then. And he's off with Demi. So we found Demi. Brilliant. Okay, let's get on out. And back to Lion's Arch for us now. I always love moments in the story here because when you get events that take place in Lion's Arch, you get to see old Lion's Arch come back, right? And that's always a joy. Uh, so, yeah, I don't want to go back to all the pirates who are now just blatantly, openly hostile to us like mad. We don't want to go anywhere near them. So how about we open up our mini-map, we move south, and uh, we head back on into LA. See, I kind of want to do that. There's, yeah, we'll go into LA. So, uh, yeah, let's just go through the main entrance because I don't know what waypoints I've got in there. And we'll move to this supposed safe house. Um, so, some other things as well, by the way, I did want to show you. Let's have a look at my inventory. Uh, some of you guys might have been wondering about stuff. So, we've got our bags, right? We've got the invisible bag, which we were using really well on our warrior. But engineers, like, they use kits more than they use regular weapons. So, like, this grenade kit isn't actually a grenade kit in our inventory. It's just a skill. So we get to save a lot more space than warriors who need to spend a lot more on all their weapons, right? Uh, we got a leather bag, we got some small leather bags, we got a starter backpack. Now up at the top here, there is another bag. It's called my shared inventory slots. Um, so this is a feature that you get um, as you buy new expansions and as you spend gems as a part of the game. And what this is, is this is inventory that goes between all of my characters, okay? All of them. So, remember right at the start of the series, we had this Hall of Monuments portal stone that I talked about. Well, it's here. Some of the rewards I've been getting from the story, well, it's here. Um, and so, when you guys notice I do random stuff on the series, it's because I'm using these shared inventory slots. Not many, but we're using those. Now, I put something into this that I kind of want to show you guys. Um, so, it's an item that Bract hasn't actually earned. It's an item from elsewhere on my account. You wouldn't actually get this from the personal story, but I would just want to show you another facet of Guild Wars 2, really. And um, it's toys. So this here is a hot air balloon souvenir. It's just a toy from another area of Guild Wars at some point. I can't even remember really. But it's a toy and what it means is when I double click it, I get a special item with special capabilities. This one's extremely basic, which is why I want to show it. But it's a balloon. And that's literally all I want to show you really. That we can run around the game holding a balloon. Um, and there are a lot of different toys, a lot of different things. There's ways to ride around on witches' brooms and magic carpets and sort of electronic uh, ascenders and things. Uh, there's tons of items like that. And um, you earn them from playing different festivals and rewards and things. So maybe at some point, if we feel like this is a bit boring the way we look right now, we can fiddle around by getting toys and using fun stuff like that. I don't know for sure, but it could be a good idea. Anyway, so yeah, moving uh, along through Lion's Arch here at night. I love the way all the windows light up. If we come down here, you'll very quietly hear. Unusual configurations. As such, I have acquired a series of eclectic skills. Would you like to hear the ballad of the Hobo Bindle? No, thank you. But I know some scholars who would love to interview you. I will make myself available. My duties as an official representative of Lion's Heart permitting. So, this is kind of a crazy moment here. Remember, Lion's Arch is set after the events of the core story. And just casually standing here at this bar is a stone dwarf. Which is, like, thrilling and super exciting. This guy is called Ogden Stonehealer. And yes, fans of the original game, people who watched that original series, this was a huge character. What's he doing here at Lion's Arch as a, you know, living stone here? Well, that will have to be something we discover in due course. But yes, in the current storyline for Guild Wars, he is here at Lion's Arch. I would speak to him, but I don't want to, like, spoil things too much. But Ogden is in the game. And he looks pretty goddamn badass and awesome, doesn't he? Look at that guy. How awesome is that? So, uh, yes. Anyway, why we're here is because we want to go to the Order of Whispers safe house. Which, it looks like we're going to speak to this bouncer to get access to. And she says, You should know that if you smash anything here, my friend Captain Smash will smash you. And we could say, Do you know where I can buy some apples? He says, You know, for a char, that Tibble really seems to have a thing for fruit, doesn't he? Anyhow, go on in. They're waiting for you downstairs. 
Oh, I forgot something completely, by the way, guys. Um, last episode, do you remember when we saw that ransom note on the desk that was addressed to the Ministry Guard, Captain Landon? Yeah, that we actually could have read. It was right here. So it said, this is what the pirate said to Landon. Okay, I was going to start today's episode with it, but I forgot. Uh, Greetings, Commander Landon. I hear you're searching for the Legate Minister's daughter, Demi. How lucky you are that we found her before the dangers of the wilderness did. Unfortunately, of course, getting to her out of this lovely, safe pirate camp was very expensive. But I'm certain a wealthy man like Minister Corticus can spare a platinum. Or 50. So a platinum, guys, is a currency worth so much... We as players cannot even get it in Guild Wars 2. You see how we now have 56 coffer, copper, 30 silver, and 2 gold throughout this series, right? We've got this much money. A platinum is 100 gold. Okay. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Not 100 gold. A platinum is 1,000 gold. So technically, the Guild Wars 2 player base, you can get 1,000 gold. It takes a lot of gameplay, but you can get a thousand gold. But because it's like not really expected by the devs or anticipated, there's no items that cost that much necessarily, right? There's some crazy collections and things. But uh, basically, because that's not something they expect most of the, the community to interface with, platinum isn't something you really deal with in this game. Back in the original, platinum was one of the main currencies, and it's like there's been major deflation between the two, uh, 250 years, I guess. Um, but so yeah, platinum is a lot of money. So when he says here, uh, he for the ransom he wants a platinum or fifty, he's talking about fifty thousand gold to barter for Demi's life from Corticus. And you know what? With the mansion and everything Corticus has got, I wouldn't be surprised if he had that kind of wealth. Make it a hundred actually for a dainty little thing. She sure can drink a lot of rum. Oh, that's so good. You would hate to yeah, like as her father, you'd hate to think that she's socializing with these horrible pirates that have got nothing to do with your upper class privileged noble life. This is brilliant. I'm sure you and your master will find that perfectly reasonable. Far better than bringing home a dead daughter, wouldn't you say? Cordially yours, Captain Jane of the Jackdaws. Okay. So anyway, that was the note from before. All right, yes. Do you know anywhere I can buy some apples? You know, for a char, that Tibble really seems to have a thing for fruit, doesn't he? Anyhow, go on in. They're waiting for you downstairs. Thanks, we say. And uh, with that, we can now enter the uh, secret place. Bit of trivia for you guys. This conversation with this bouncer, it used to be in the old Lion's Arch where... It had not been destroyed and rebuilt. It used to take place in a different area and it sort of made more sense that there was a secret place hit near here. A hatch, a literal hatch. This time it's not quite so obvious. It will be later in the series, but not for a bit. So anyway, there you go, down the hatch. And uh, now we find ourselves in a different area, as you can tell. And maybe we can go through the door, can we? We can interact with it, maybe secret exit. But basically, you'll, you'll notice now, guys, we're in a totally different area as Lion's Arch. Because we've technically gone like five years into the past to see what the game was like back then, right? And we're about to meet an interesting noble lady that, funnily enough, the young Casey Whitedale may or may not have just been meeting with not too long ago. Okay, so look, it's the Order of Whispers. Wow. Hey, guys. I was beginning to believe you weren't real. Tybalt, thank the Lady of the Mirror. I thought something terrible had happened. Your first field mission, and you go out of contact. Hang on, first mission? I thought I was the newcomer. Uh, well, yeah, I might have overstated that. I've been in the Order for years, but this is my first time in the field. Initiate. My name is Lady Wee. I'm the Order's agent within the Crichton Ministry. This rough-looking gentleman is Ben Tenstrikes, my protector. I was supposed to get Demi safely out of Divinity's reach, but I got sacked by Ministry guards. You're lucky to be alive, Ben. Cauticus wields great power in Krita, and he's none too pleased about his daughter's desertion. How did Landon find me? There's no way the Ministry Guard could have tracked me this far from Divinity's Reach. Your father probably purchased a tracking enchantment. Do you have anything you never removed? Something he knew you'd keep with you? My mother's necklace? He's using it to follow me? My father is a cold-hearted snake. This safe house will block such divining. But when you leave here, you will be found. Lion's Arch is no longer safe for you. Tybalt, Initiate, you must take Demi to the Chantry of Secrets right away. She'll be safe there. Your father's treachery could be useful to us, Demi. If Commander Landon is following the enchantment, we can use it to lead him awry. Clever. Now let's work out the details so we can get Demi out of here safe and sound.
<laughs> I love how blatantly we're still saying her name wrong. Confer with Tybalt and notify me when you decide. Poor Demi. Her father has done some terrible things. Agreed. But at the risk of being callous, that's precisely why her information is so valuable. So, what is this? I can't believe it. So, guys, you you might you might have forgotten already. We had a party at a minister's house. The minister of Ruricton. I feel terrible. I should have been there to protect Demi. That's laudable, Ten Strikes. But Cauticus is dangerous. I am not surprised he got the better of you. That scum's already hurt a lot of people. Why can't he just call it quits? He wants the Crichton throne. That's why we must get to me to safety and find out what she knows. So, I mean, that's not necessarily news to us there. I wonder if they'll continue talking. But this woman, okay, there was a party. A nice, happy, old man, Minister Wee. The man with the power in Kryta, okay, over Rookton and the Ascalonians. We went to a mansion at his hat. We went to a party at his mansion. A mansion at his house. And uh, we were there discussing various uh, corruptions in um, in Divinity's Reach. Little did we know, little did Casey know, that the old woman we spoke to, we had an actual speak with her. If you go back to that episode, I might have hinted at something. She is leading a double life where she's here in the Order of Whispers. It's obscene. So check it out. Uh, we can speak to her. She says, I admit I had my reservations about such a new initiate handling this, but you and Tibble are doing splendidly. And Tibble is new. We'll have a chat with him about that in a second. But first, importantly, isn't your husband a minister of Krita? Like Demi's father? A minister, yes, but nothing like Corticus. My husband is a kind and generous man. Corticus is a serpent. So Minister Wee, and by the way, we can genuinely believe her. Minister Wee is a top guy, right? He's an alright dude. But his wife is a member of the Order of Whispers, leading a double life. Brilliant. Um, how can I help you? Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, what? We can't ask her anything else now. Crazy. What were the other options? Anyway, so here's a mercenary that was supposed to be handling this, but messed it all up. So, they let Tibble out of his cave. You must be special, Bract. I even heard your name here and there. Wow, you've even heard our name? Undoubtedly, because of my incredible invention. Let me tell you more about it. It's called the Transatmospheric Weather Conv Invention. No, 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 no. I was talking about the way you took out researcher... What's her name? Teo? Nasty little thing she was. Wow, look at that. So he even knows about our adventure with Teo. It's good to know my efforts are recognized. Good day, Ben. I love it when the personal story does this, where it b builds bridges between all these different stories. Good day, Ben. I like you. You're very cool. Um, okay, so what else have we got here? Uh, Tybalt, man, you, you've been lying to us. I know that this is a secret society and whatnot, but he says you should talk to Demi first. I, I kind of snapped at her, and I know she's feeling low right now. Maybe cheer her up a bit. Right, okay, yeah, you weren't exactly very tactful. So much happened in that conversation there. Um, all right, Demi, what's going on? She says, thanks for saving me from those pirates. They were horrible brutes. I guess, I guess I've been a little sheltered. Uh, okay, so we, what, what were we? We're, we're charming, right? Be at peace, my lady. Tibble and I are capable agents. We'll ensure your safety. I've never been around a char before. Why protect me? I'm a human. My father's a minister. And we say, well, the Order of Whispers crosses all borders. And Tibble is gentle and a loyal person. You'll see. He is gentle and loyal and funny. Very well. I'll trust you both. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we she we can ask her something else. She says I owe you my life ask anything. I'm sorry to hear about your mother's necklace That must be a shock My mother meant the world to me. She says I can't believe that he would take advantage of that And uh, we say well, what is it? What information do you have about Corticus? What are you gonna tell the order? It must be pretty important. No offense She says but I'm not talking until I'm safe as long as I know something you don't I'm even safer I understand, but it's sad you have to think that way. My father raised me. Even if I dislike him, I still learn from the best political mind in Kryta. I mean, that's a good idea, right? Like, she doesn't want to be just extracted the information from her and then dumped on the sidewalk in danger. She wants to make sure she's uh, she's actually got some shelter. I think that's fine. And you remember they mentioned taking her to the order, the Chantry of Secrets? Well, we've not actually heard any real base of operation from this, these guys. Even this looks... I mean, we're in a freaking cave and Lion's Arch doesn't look very good. This is just a hideout, right? Um, so perhaps that's what they're talking about? And lastly, we can say, uh, why are you informing on your father? Are you betraying Kryta? And she says, I'm not betraying Kryta. He is... Oh, you wouldn't understand. Just get me to safety and I'll tell the order everything. So, yeah, we kind of get, guys. It's, it's dawned on you now, I hope. The second half of Casey's story, really. We get to find out the deeper stuff uh, as far as the Order of Whispers is concerned. It's a great thing to pair with the Order of Whispers. If you're helping Kryta, then you're doing the right thing. I'll trust you, we say. Okay, good. And don't forget, we are on the Queen's side because she cares about uniting the races. She cares about the dragon, uh, which will then help us fight the dragons, which, of course, the Order of Whispers cares about. All right, so good. 
Tibble, what's going on, man? He says, those pirates are interesting, but tricking those ministry guards sounds like it could be fun too. So what's the plan? He says, either Lady Wee puts a spell on the necklace and we try to sneak Demi out, or Ben Ten Strikes watches over the real Demi while we escort a fake through the city as bait. So we get a very cool option here. Um, we, I, I mean, the plan to sneak Demi out sounds a bit riskier. Using a decoy sounds a bit more order of whispery, doesn't it? Let's use a decoy and lay a false trail. He says, okay. Don't know whether we'll get a decoy, dot, dot, dot. But I'm sure Lady Wee can help us think of something. Sounds good to me. All right, Lady Wee, we've, we've come up with a plan. I'm sure everybody's going to love this plan. It's going to be brilliant. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Do we get more dialogue now at this point? Um, no, no, no. I think I think it's all the same, right? So let it tibble out. Yeah. Okay, so Lady Wee. We've decided to leave a false trail and trick the Ministry Guard into an ambush. Once they're out of the way, it'll be easier to get Demi to safety. Tybalt and I will lay an ambush while Ben gets Demi out of the city. After we've handled Landon, we'll meet up with you again. If you're determined to do this, at least let me make the ruse a good one. With a little magical assistance, Tybalt will make an excellent Demi Beetlestone. Tybalt? Wait, 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 wait. Making a char like me look like her? I hope you have some mighty strong magic up your sleeve. Don't worry. You'll make a beautiful decoy, Tybalt. You're putting your life in danger for my safety. I won't forget this. Thank you. Thank you all. Brilliant. That includes everyone there in the plan. Great stuff. Down the hatch complete. We get another new rifle. Pretty good. We can go for toughness and vitality. So 75 vitality equals 750 health. That's a lot of health, guys. Or we can just do more damage. I'm going to take the health because that cannon was hitting us quite hard. Uh, we also get another booster. This one's an experience one. We get more crafting components. That's great. Okay, cool. So, we'll equip that. Um, how can I help you, Initiate Bract? Uh, and it's the same dialogue. Okay, great. So, there you go. That's the instance complete. Tibble, are you all right with that idea? On to step two. I'll hang out with the other agents. You go get started, he says. Uh, by the way, you can sneaky sneaky um, actually come to the edge of this instance here. And you can have a look around the outside um, in, like, the, the five-year-old version of LA. But we won't worry about that too much. So, there you go, guys. Next episode, we will do that. Now, I know it's been irritating the hell out of all of you. We will. I will give you the satisfaction now. I, uh, I leveled up earlier, obviously. We've had this dinging away. So, we hit level 42. And the game just taught us about this. Miniatures. Miniatures are collectible toy versions of creatures, heroes, and villains from Tyria that follow you through the world. From the miniatures section of the hero panel, you can select one that you've collected to join you. So, throughout the personal story, you don't really acquire too many of these. Um... Certainly not early on. It's do optional achievements and things that you get them. I have a massive collection on my account. And from this point on, now that the game's taught us about them, just like we did uh, for the Guild Wars 1 series, I kind of want to do it here for this one. We are spoiled for choice, though. There are tons and tons and tons of different uh, minis we could do. We could have, like, a mini inquest that runs around with us, a mini inquest toy, a mini uh, assault golem, a mini festive golem, a mini, like, toy golem. A mini servitor golem. There's tons to choose from. I think for now we'll go with an assault golem. This guy's pretty cool. I might even dye myself to look red. We could make ourselves look vaguely inquesty. Now that we're not so much near inquest territory, I'm sure that won't get us in too much trouble. Uh, but yeah, we'll run around with this golem that hangs out with us now. He'll run around. He'll follow us. If we stand still, he'll start doing little animations and things. And uh, yeah, generally these guys are all really awesome. We'll try to make sure we have good minis with us as the stories unfold. And uh, yeah, that'll be something cool to keep an eye out on. The other thing I want to do as well, which we will play with next episode, is another kit. Today we saw the grenade kit. Tomorrow... We'll have a look at the elixir gun. A whole new weapon. So thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Oh, God, there's a norm walking near us. And I'll see you very shortly. Hey, which way to the outhouse? We don't have outhouses. We have water closets. Like latrines? Nope. They all flow into the same sewer system, and that all goes out to sea. That's more than I really needed to know. Hey, you asked. Just don't ask me if anything lives down there. You've got it.